Hey there, Adam Savage here in my cave with an awesome tool tip, show and tell, mailbag. It's a little bit of all of this. Um, I recently received, I recently received a bunch of acrylic paint. And that's wonderful. Acrylic paint is not cheap. And it's always awesome to have some in the cave. But this is special acrylic paint. And it comes from Guy Cowan at Archive X, makers of correct studio scale paints for Star Wars models. What? Yes! We even have things in here like um, the specific type of undercoat reefer white. Reefer white, a key base color uh, for Star Wars models. Um, I can barely, like, walk through this. We'll include a link to uh, Archive, X, Archive X's uh, website in the comments below. But they have sent me, they basically, they, they have apparently just spent two years developing this line of acrylic paints uh, for airbrush and for brushing, and it has airbrush thinner. It is a, a king's ransom in awesome paint, and it's not just, like, these aren't just useful to me because they're Star Wars colors, although they are useful to me because they're Star Wars colors. There are, they are also some wonderful grimes and greens and earth tones and washes. I mean, this is spectacular. In fact, so spectacular that the worst thing I could do is end up putting this in a drawer. Yeah, the worst thing I could do is put this all in a drawer. Right, like, I'm looking at it like this. How am I supposed to know what I want? How am I supposed to know what I want, I ask you? It is an excellent question. For if one wants the utility of these paints, if I want one, I'm sorry, I guess it's like there's some abstract one. No, one is me, I am one. If I want the proper amount of utility out of these paints, I need to, as I use them, be able to see all of them. And there is 40 bottles? Yeah, you get where this is going. It's going to be a little bit of shop infrastructure. So it is actually almost, I think it's actually gonna be a one day build. I'm gonna build a carrier for these that I can see them all at once and always know exactly which one I need at any given moment. I'm going to do this using a combination of a Forstner bit, my favorite drill bit. Yeah, I have a favorite drill bit. Um, and uh, one of the last pieces I have of this uh, light density fiberboard known as True Pan. Used to be my bread and butter material. Now I can't even look at it, but it is perfect for this application. I think that's everything. There are some other paints on here, but they don't have anything to do with this. They're just paints. I literally went, I, I was at the art store two days ago, uh, Blick over on Van Ness, and they were delightful there just to pick up some more weathering greens because I recently had occasion to do a Verdigris finish and I didn't, I had to kind of hand mix it all, but the phthalo, uh, the phthalo green, the phthalo turquoise is much more what I was looking for. So I just made sure I had it in my stock and a couple of varnishes. But then I came back here to find this incredible package from Guy. Thank you, Guy Cowan and the team at Archivex, which seems to consist solely of Guy Cowan, he says, he signs his letter, Guy Cowan, the one man stupid enough to actually create these. My hat is off to you, sir. Let us put these in a suitable carrier for their awesomeness. Uh, so how do I display these so I see them all? Is it a monolithic wall of paints? I think it's a double-sided wall. I think it's a double-sided wall. I think what I'm gonna end up doing will be three trays Three trays of 14 holes. Right, 40, that gives me a couple of extra, which is exactly what I want. So three trays of seven pairs. So I can look at one side and see all the names on that side, and I can look at the other side and see all the names on that side, and that cuts down the area I have to make by half um, with a carrying handle at the top. 
and I don't think I'm gonna try and carry the airbrush thinner on the same thing. I don't need it. Um, what you should know about this is I am planning, here is my little sad paint cubby hole. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it has seen better days. Actually, no, it has never seen better days. It has always been a shitty little hovel like that for my paint. Um, and it's got to change. It's got to change. So my, my, um, my design aesthetic for this type of paint is actually based on a solution I've been thinking about in here of pulling out sort of archived uh, uh, shelves of the paints that I utilize See, the difference between me and perhaps, well, sorry, the specific problem I have is that I often don't know what I'm looking for. That's the problem. And I need my shop infrastructure to accommodate for the fact that I don't know what I'm looking for. That means I need to be able to see everything all at once. Well, it's also first order retrievability, but. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm forgetting. Um, I'm going to be drilling these on my mill so I can get very precise about the placement of them. Yeah, uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be great. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna worry about the, the actual color distribution later. Okay, that gives me two extras. So three shelves of 14, and they're gonna be no one. It's gonna be like that. And like that. Yeah. So we're doing three. So that size. All right. Um, now, one of the troubles I get into is that I tend to do everything a little bit too close. Uh, so I'm gonna measure out the middle here. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, 11.25, that is 5.625. Then this guy right there. Are you serious? Oh no, I see you. Okay. Okay, so this is the size of this is the size of my Forstner bit, and this will be the distance between each bottle as it goes along. And hopefully I'll end up with a little extra material out here um, for the screwing to the sides that will hold this all up and together. Yeah. <laughs> I have the uh, MDF uh, placed in the vise. I have uh, included a stop so that all three pieces will register the same. And now I'm just going to use a center finder to get myself into the zone. Great. And this down.
Okay. 1.5 inches separating each one. Okay, great. 1.5. So uh, now I can bring this up. I want to figure out how deep I want to go. I'm going to actually just put a stop on this because, yeah, we'll see. Right to there. There it is. I am properly zeroed up. My Forstner bit is directly over the first hole and I know that every subsequent hole is 1.5 inches away from its neighbor. Um, that should allow me to get this done right quick, but I'm about to make a lot of dust on my milling machine, a lot of wood pulp dust. So I'm gonna break out the vacuum and have that here. It's gonna be noisy, but like it's the only way to do a thing like this. Uh, let's um, set this up so it's a little bit more positive. Go. Yeah, that'll do it.
with my three shelves cut, it's time to assemble. So that's uh, just a little bit of problem solving about, sorry, I didn't mean to talk while I'm moving. That's just a little bit of problem solving, re the height of things. So let's just do that and that and that. Yeah, we're coming up to a kind of a nice thing here. Okay, uh, so these are the, gonna be the, these are gonna be the two sides of my carrier. And what I'm about to do is I'm about to mark them for notches to hold on to this, to have a little more of a positive grab. I'm gonna cut those notches out in a different way than normal. Uh, normally I'd use the table saw to do a, like a, what do you call that kind of joint? Um, or I'd use the milling machine, but today I'm gonna use the band saw because I can. Uh, so those are, I need the smaller side. Two. Yeah, so I'm gonna cut these all these notches out on the bandsaw um, again because it's not um, it's not fine woodworking I'm doing here. It's good enough woodworking. <laughs>
I'm hoping the chisel will allow me to actually clear these notches. We'll see. That was nice. Let's try that again. Ooh, all right. We'll do final cleanup on the bandsaw, but that's terrific. Did Gunther put up a sign saying that I was using the bandsaw? Thank you, Gunther. Sorry, I didn't move the camera. I was just cleaning up these notches. They are Bueno's notches. They're good, I'm happy with them. Sorry for the language pun. Um, so now we have our notched pieces of wood that will hold on to the sides of these guys. I'm actually gonna do that quite nicely. Oh, very good. Okay, so yeah, see that? That's just, the, that's the press fit. Gotta be pleased with that. All right. Um, let's see here. Cut out some little feet here. And then, uh, oh right, yeah, I gotta do a, a handle. So hang on. <clears throat> yep. Um, and one of the great things is to find a Forster bit and the pipe that it precisely matches. That's what this is. So I'm going to drill a. First of all, what is this? This is 3.04, so that's 1.52. Yep, I'm gonna drill that on the drill press. This plywood is whatever it is made out of is such crap. I have my sides. They are they are ready. I got little feet, little pizzas, little toes. Now he's come crawling towards me, crawling across the kitchen floor. Little talking heads for your amusement. Good. And some air. Right, final assembly. You know that you are in trouble when you go to your mechanic and he says, 
It's not the brakes. It's the brake assembly. Every time your mechanic says assembly, it's trouble. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's get some. So awesome, I love that fit. Okay, there we go. Adding in some staplage. Good. I'm using a short, short, narrow crown staples just to make sure I don't poke through into where the bottles are supposed to go. That'll be a pain in the ass to clear out. Good. Uh, all right, I think I have a couple of little things to fix here. Yeah, I had it split down here. Oh, yeah. And I cut this pipe out where my thumb is on this little bandsaw. All right. Did that make you sick? I'm really sorry about that. Okay. Let's just get a little bit of glue here. Actually, I'm just going to do some in here. There we go. Yeah. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Damn it. I really, really, really messed all that up. Here, let's see. Why did I do it like that? All right, there we go. Better, better. I didn't even know what I was thinking. Just like trying to go too fast, you know? Yeah, I know, this is not a permanent solution, but it's glue. It's just literally, this is just a handle. It's only ever gonna be used to lift this thing with. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, for the acrylic of the paint. Thanks. 
This makes me very happy. So let's see what we can see. Let's, uh, let's gather together. I think by color, so I think I'm gonna gather together by color variant. I know, I know there are other, let's do the grays. Oh, that's a grimy black, leather black, engine black, greens. Got more of these earth tones. This is a dark gray. This is a lark light gray. Great. Light grime. Put that here. That's a kind of a deal ILM surface gray. Okay, now we got all these blues. Wait. Light reefer gray. Oh man, the reefer. Yeah. Reefer, the paint, the, the specific floquel color <clears throat> is a very excellent, excellent color. Um, oh, okay. I like that. Um, let's try this. Let's try the reds all the way. Oop. Ow all the way to the browns. And then we'll get the browns going into white browns and then the yellows, which will proceed into the, the greens. Yeah, I think I've got five greens. Look at that, that's exactly what I was hoping, okay. That's it. Ha <laughs> ah. ha. Guy, thank you. This is a beautiful addition to my, um, this is a beautiful addition to my painting kit and I plan to use these in good health. Uh, thank you so much, Archive X. Thank you for the lovely gift of the paints. And when I use them, you'll see it here on the channel. Until next time, stay safe and uh, I'll see you guys around.